welcome to chemistry lover and in this video i am going to discuss about the inorganic chemistry topics that you should prepare for jam 2019 i previously made video on organic chemistry topics that you can check the link is in the description section and i will uh, very soon upload the physical chemistry topics Uh, all the inorganic chemi chemistry topics I divided into seven parts, and uh, that things I will go. I am going to discuss, and side by side I will give you the book reference from where you should uh, read these topics. Okay, so our first topic is the atomic structure. So although in the syllabus the atomic structure is mentioned in the physical chemistry part, but this atomic structure which is included in the jam syllabus that is qualitative part, and most of the cases it is found in the inorganic chemistry book so physical chemistry books there is quantum mechanical treatment and that things but that things are not included in the jam syllabus so these things you can get in the any inorganic chemistry book and they are the hydrogen atom the basic uh, concept or the basic structure of the hydrogen atom the wave function the plot of the wave function like r square versus r or 4 pi r square um, capital r square versus r these plots you have to practice then the shape and the symmetry of the orbitals, the ASP and D orbitals, their shape and symmetry, uh, the quantum numbers, N principal quantum number, L azimuthal quantum number, and magnetic quantum number, and this ML quantum number. So these four quantum numbers you should know uh, what are their values, their allowed values. Then the feeling of the electrons in the orbitals, the Huns rule, Pauli exclusion principle, and the Abbau principle. All this uh, about all these rules you should have clear idea. Then after that the determination of the ground state term symbol is very important uh, questions comes in the exam like uh, they will give you some uh, atom and you have to determine the ground state term symbol for that atom after that the shielding and uh, basically the shielding constant and the slater's rule so slater's rule is another very important factor you can simply give you to determine uh, the corrected value of uh, electronegativity and there in that case we have to apply the slater's rule uh, or they can give you the shielding constant and then also you, you have to apply the Slater's rule. So all these all these things you can get from Hui book or uh, R. Sorkar volume 1, right. Then after that uh, the next topic is bonding. So in bonding uh, you have uh, valence bond theory and the basic and qualitative molecular orbital theory. Okay, so among the molecular orbital theory you have to do the Mm, homo and heteronuclear diatomic molecules the so, homonuclear diatomic molecules like uh, carbon boron oxygen fluorine so uh, in that case you have to know what is the difference between the electronegative elements and the mm, less electronegative elements they are feeling how um, the energy levels are filled and what are the uh, electronic configuration uh, that question generally comes and some the um, heteroatomic molecules like carbon monoxide or uh, cyanide like this so in the VBT you have to do the hybridization concept of hybridization uh, what is the uh, requirement for hybridization what are the conditions for hybridization energy condition like that and bonding condition after that the VACPR theory VACPR theory is very important and the Baines rule because these rules are uh, used for the uh, determination of shape of molecules okay after that these are the um, uh, covalent bonding now we come to the ionic bonding now ionic bonding you have to do the lattice energy the concept of lattice packing and lattice energy the bond land equation and other related related equation like uh, Kapustinowski equation and some other equations are there but bond land equation is most important because they can direct ask uh, to determine the lattice energy and then you have to remember this bond land equation then the bond exponent uh, in which uh, properties it is dependent on and after that the born haber cycle you have to be able to um, calculate a particular property using the born haber cycle after that the radius radius ratio rule which radius ratio is favored which uh, uh, um, lattice like uh, for sodium chloride what is the radius ratio for cesium chloride what is the radius ratio and so on then after that the ionic radii that um, how to determine the ionic radii calculation uh, using the Pauling's rule and also the Fajan's rule is very important that is uh, introduction of covalency in ionic bonding 
okay then we come to the main group elements now main group elements and the periodic properties we uh, group them in the same um, topic okay so uh, from the periodic properties you have to do the ionization energy electron affinity and electronegativity so they are periodic trains how they vary along a series or how they vary, vary along a group and the definition of each properties that is what does actually it mean and from electronegativity you have to do the Pauling scale that is how to determine electronegativity Arle Rocho scale and Mulliken Jeffies but uh, this Pauling scale and Arle Rocho scale is the most important and you can do Mulliken Jeffies also after that uh, the trend of properties for the main group elements like you have to know about the chemistry of main group hydrides, oxides, oxo acids, carbonate, halide bicarbonate these all compounds about these all compounds you have to know their properties now uh, you have to know their periodic properties like group trend or periodic trend for reducing properties of hydrides oxidizing properties of oxides and uh, acidity of oxo acids that is how uh, when you come across a group how these properties varies and also the stability of carbonates and bicarbonates the melting points and boiling points these things are very important uh, MCU question comes you have to predict the order okay then uh, also the electron deficient element is especially mentioned in the syllabus like uh, the complex of group 13 elements like boron elements or aluminium elements they how they satisfy their uh, ele uh, electron deficiency the Lewis acid character uh, which is the origin of the Lewis acid character and uh, in this in this respect you have to uh, do the uh, acidity and basicity and some something I forgot to mention is that you have to also do the non aqueous uh, solvents like uh, liquid ammonia solvent and uh, the other super acid concept of super acid is, uh, super acid is also very important so non aqueous solvent and the concept of super acid these two things you should include your syllabus then after that the shape and the shape of the main group elements compounds like any main group elements like uh, you may given the ox oxide of uh, um, chalcogens or any halide or any other compound you have to determine their shape and uh, structure and geometry and for this you have to apply the VACPR theory and the valence bond theory uh, then the effect of d orbital on bonding of the complexes or effect of d orbital on the shape of molecules uh, how the d orbital affect properties of molecules then the relativistic effect and um, inert pair effect these two are very important how uh, the properties of molecules uh, or properties of elements uh, affected by these two effects then uh, we come to the transition metal chemistry so transition metal chemistry you have to do the general trend for size and the electronic configuration for d group elements or the d block elements rather i say and then the properties of oxide hydroxide and salts but these are not very important actual important part is the coordination chemistry and for that you have to do the valence bond theory and crystal field theory the basic idea of valence bond theory and crystal field theory the isomerism isomerism is the most vital topic here all type of isomerism geometrical isomerism and your um, optical isomerism the other um, which type of isomerism are given in your book all these things you have to do and then the calculation of crystal field stabilization energy the basic reaction mechanisms like uh, trans effect and related things the basic thing not the advanced level thing only the basic things you have to do then the color of the transition mineral complexes the charge transfer spectra this is very important the spectral properties the basics of a spectral properties that uh, uh, how the shoulder comes in a peak like this then the magnetic properties uh, the classification of ferromagnetic diamagnetic like that and also the calculation of the magnetic properties in Bohr magneton unit after that in organometallic compounds you have to do the 18 electron rule this is very important the electron neutrality principle or the back bonding principle then metal carbonyls metal nitrosyls metallocins and uh, basically the ferrocins this uh, about their properties their synthesis and basic reactions you have to do then the basics of homogeneous catalysis like uh, walker synthesis wilkinson catalyst jiggler nata catalyst like that things you have to just basic idea and then carbine the short carbine and fisher carbine and all these things you can read from uh, hui or ekedash Ekedas, there are several volumes on coordination chemistry, but who is good book and you can also follow the um, R, R. Sorkar book. And for this group chemistry, you can follow Hui, R. Sorkar or F. A. Cotton, right? Then after that, the bioinorganic chemistry. This is a very scoring part, and here you have to do the hemoglobin properties of hemoglobin, myoglobin, the oxygen transport, the Bohr effect, um, then the um, uh, Bohr effect and other uh, related things, the cytochrome structure of cytochrome. 
the carbonic anhydrase, uh, carboxypeptide, cisplatin, and blue copper proteins, the copper proteins basically. And also you have to do the uh, photosynthesis, the steps of the photosynthesis which are involved in the photosynthetic process. These things you have to do, all these things you can read from Hui book. Okay, then after that, the analytical chemistry. For analytical chemistry, all the reactions and the uh, binding properties of EDTA, uh, the charge of resulting metal complex, then the indicator properties of the indicator, organic compounds which are used in inorganic chemistry, then the titrations and the qualitative analysis. These are basically you do your practicals in the BSc and that things you have to do. After that, the radioactivity, the last part. Uh, here you have to do the magic number, half life. Uh, the decay constant, the fission, fusion and the NYP rule that is when alpha emission will occur, when beta emission will occur, when neutron emission, positron emission will occur like that. And from this half life and decay constant to do the numerical problems. And some other things are mentioned in the syllabus like the dipole moment uh, measurement, the calculation of dipole moment, some uh, properties like uh, Van der Waals uh, interaction. Then the solubilities, uh, what are the conditions for solubilities and this, this miscellaneous topics you can read from Hui book. So these are the syllabus for inorganic chemistry. If you do all these topics, you can answer any question from the jam and uh, that's all. So if you like this video, then share this video with your friends and uh, if you are new in this channel, then subscribe my channel and uh, thank you for watching.